Shema'u Israel, Shabbat Shalom, Ami Saris Davi, my Ishabaki is here with us as well. Before we go any further, we're going to have the blowing of the shofar and our Pledge of Allegiance, and we're going to get right into it this day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Next, we're going to have our Pledge of Allegiance. Repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the Most High. I pledge allegiance to the Most High. The creator of the universe. The creator of the universe. And to his word. And to his word. From which all things came. From which all things came. One camp. One camp. Called Israel. Called Israel. With salvation. With salvation. Truth. Truth. Equity. Equity. Liberty. Liberty. And justice for all. And justice for all. Who hear his commandments. Who hear his commandments. And do them. And do them. Hallelujah. Next, we're going to have our first scripture. Our first scripture is from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. It is written, even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Hallelujah. Our next scripture is Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. It is written. He that turns away his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer shall be abomination. Hallelujah. We're going to have our Torah portion from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. It is written, And else spake all these words, saying, I am Yah thy El, which have brought thee forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other El before thee. You shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yah, thy El, am a jealous El. Visit then the iniquity of the Abbas upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yah thy El in vain. For Yah will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yah thy El. In it you shall not do any work. You nor your son nor your daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yah made heaven and earth to see and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy Abba and thy Amma, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yah thy El gives thee. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You shall not covet thy neighbor's house. You shall not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. Our prayer exhortation for today is definitely coming out of Psalm 143. I'm going to kneel uh, and face his holy temple and lift my hands toward his holy oracle. 
praise and thank the most high for keeping us. Father, as we kneel before your throne of mercy and grace, we glorify you, praise you, and thank you, Father. We invite you in the midst of this rest, in the midst of this day, asking that you would just have mercy upon all our sins, all our shortcomings. We ask, Father, that you would move according to your election and purpose in the midst of our lives. And remember us from Psalm 143 that says, Hear our prayer, O Yah, give ear to our supplications, and thy faithfulness answer us, and in thy lawfulness. Enter not into judgment with thy ebeds, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy have persecuted our souls. He have smitten our lives down to the ground. He have made us to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is our mm -hmm. ruach within us overwhelmed and our hearts within us is desolate. We remember the days of old. We meditate on all thy works. We muse on the works of thy hands. We stretch forth our hands unto thee. Our souls thirst after thee as a thirsty land sea lot. Here speedily, O Yah, our Ruach fails. Hide not thy face from us, lest we be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause us to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do we trust. Cause us to know the way wherein we should walk, for we lift up our souls unto thee. Deliver us, O Yah, from our enemies. We flee unto thee to hide us. Teach us to do thy will, for thou art our El. Thy Ruach is good. Lead us into the land of uprightness. Quicken us, O Yah, for thy name's sake, for thy lawfulness' sake. Bring our souls out of trouble, and of thy mercy cut off our enemies and destroy all of them that afflict our souls, for we are thy ebeds. We ask that you would move mercifully and mightily in the midst of our lives, in the midst of our hearts, in the midst of our minds. You're welcomed here in my body. You're welcome in my Isha's body. You're welcomed in my home, Father. And I ask, Father, that as others that join us welcome you in the midst of their homes, that you would be with them, bless them, guide them, and keep them, Father. We ask that you would prepare our hearts and minds, mm -hmm. Father, to receive thy word. Allow we, your children, to stand strong according to your election and purpose. And as we call upon you in spirit and in truth, we ask that you would move mercifully and mightily right now. Remember the widower, the widows, the fatherless, the oppressed and poor. Remember all of those right now going through homelessness, eviction, foreclosure, turn off notices, and repossession. Remember those struggling with bills financially, Father. We ask that you would make a great and mighty way for them and deliver them as only you can. And we'll praise you, we'll glorify you, and we'll lift you up. Have thine own way in our hearts and our minds, Father. And I ask that you would just bless us as we bless you. We ask this to stay in Yeshua name we pray. Hallelujah. I praise and thank the most high for allowing us to gather. I don't know about you. It's been a long, rough week. But nonetheless, the most high has been merciful in all that he says and does. Because many of us could have woke up dead. We could have not woken up at all, you know. I praise and thank him for allowing us to be in the land that are living seemingly in our right minds and in our right spirits and our right souls. You know, a lot of times we take things for granted. And that's one thing we shouldn't do is take things for granted. Many of us have opportunity to draw closer to the most high, to shake some sins off of us. But what do we do? We sit back and play the post and play the role and sit around all year long every day, all day, with the same ratchet sins on us. I hope and pray that the Most High opens up somebody's heart and mind that's seeking immersion and allow them to get immersed for the remission of their sins. If you're not an immersed, immersed in Yeshua HaMashiach name, believe me, you're walking around with your own sins. All right, and it could show on you like you're putting on some bad makeup or you didn't clean your eyes or... Uh, I'm brown, somebody taking something white or red or black and painting right here on my forehead. Well, that's how it shows up on people who are immersed versus people who aren't immersed, all right? Some things are spiritually, ruach, ru, don't, through the ruach, are they only discerned? And this is where a lot of times, where it's his children come into problems. 
because we think we have a form of lawfulness, righteousness, but we don't. We have something that we conjured up on our own and uh, 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 ignored, okay? Um, honey, can you put the same message from YouTube in there about the uh, prayer tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Thank you. Uh, for those who don't know, you might have just heard uh, every night starting at night all the way up until next uh, uh, sixth day, we're going to have prayer 11 p.m. on that number that is going to be posted in here. So it's 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you got to figure out what time it's going to be for you wherever you are if you're not on the East Coast. I hope and pray that you all can join us because we definitely, definitely have seen some things move within this week alone. I praise and thank the Most High for allowing me and my Isha uh, uh, prayer time with one another so that we're able to get some things moving for us in the uh, uh, spiritual realm, manifesting in the natural realm. All right, sometimes in life, you're going to have to leave some people over there while your stones throw away over here, all right? Sometimes you're going to have to do that in order for your sanctity and your peace of mind, all right? We're in this scriptural eighth month. We only got uh, four events that you came across in five verses in this scriptural eighth month. Our first event was in 1 Kings chapter 6. Please read verses 1 through 38. Our sc scriptural proof that this has something to do with the eighth scriptural month is in verse 38. And I'll take away very plain. Finish building the Most High's house this month. Some of you all are struggling with things. Uh, uh, you got the strange. Some of you all are struggling with things uh, 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 other than the strange. Let's start. Let's let's get the strength in the course of this month to uh, 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 mount up like eagle's wings and put those things behind us that need to be put behind us. Our second event in this eighth scriptural month is in 1 Kings chapter 12. Please read verses 1 through 33. Our scriptural proof that this has something to do with the eighth scriptural month is in verse 32 and verse 33. Very important. Our takeaway is clear. Watch your row of them and if he's, he has made, okay? Watch your row of them. Somewhere along the line, there's going to be some Jeroboam's in your life conjuring a feast, saying the feast of the Most High is here, the feast of the Most High is there, it's this time, it's that time. If they're not coming to you from Scripture, I suggest you uh, uh, briskly walk away, all right? I'm telling you to briskly walk away, all right? Very important that you do because we should be seeking after following the Most High in His Word and not men in their conjurings. There are a lot of conjurings going on right now within uh, 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 Israel, all right? We as his children got to be mindful of what we're saying and what we're doing, all right? There are, uh, uh, it was another dude uh, 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 in scripture that conjured up his own feasts, all right? And his name was Mordecai, him and uh, Hadessah. Over there in what's the Hadessah chapter 9, Esther chapter 9. When you go back and read in there, it talks about how he made Purim him and Hadassah, all right? Everything Israel is supposed to acknowledge and celebrate is in Leviticus chapter 23. Very important that you be mindful of what you're supposed to be doing because you as a person are going to be held accountable for you reading and applying this word. That's what uh, uh, you working out your soul salvation with fear and trembling is all about, is you reading and applying the word of the most high, all right? Our third event in this scriptural eighth month is uh, from 1 Chronicles chapter 27. Please read verses 1 through 15. The captain of this month is Sebekah, all right? And his name means corpse light, all right? Very important that we as the people of the Most High understand what's going on round about us concerning all that we have to do as far as following and keeping the commandments of the Most High. We don't want to end up corpse-like. We don't want to end up like Lot's wife. 
Somebody asked the question, well, if Lot's wife turned around and became a pillar of salt, who turned around to see that she was a pillar of salt? All right? <laughs> Israel, come on now. We got to stop with some of these asinine questions. Um, some of you all are getting a little too deep and spooky with scripture when things are plainly written there, but the plainly written things you don't want to do or acknowledge. Please, Israel, you got to find yourself in the even place, in the arms and in the care of the Most High. Very important that you do so, all right? Our fourth event in this scriptural eighth month is out of Zechariah chapter one. Please read verses one through 21. Very important that you do so. And our takeaway is very, very plain, all right? Turn to the most high. Some of you all are turning away from the most high, turning away from the most high and wondering why you're not having blessings overtake you. They ain't running down, nor you pressed up, shaken and stirred and broken down and wrapped up together, all right? <laughs> Some of you all are running from the Most High. Run to the Most High, all right? If you, if you was a dog be like I am, you would definitely understand where your mercies are, are, are lay. And you would definitely run to the Most High and not away from them. Very important that you do so because... We're in some trifling times right now, and at the drop of a dime, anything can happen to anybody. So don't sit in no corner all alone in isolation and darkness and suffering in silence when all you got to do is run to the most high. That's the key of Darvi, all right? Some of you all need to understand that. It's very important that we apply these events into our lives. And this word eight was the biblical Hebrew word shemini. And it was entry number 8066. And it definitely, um, uh, uh, excuse me, it was entry number, uh, yeah, 8066. And it comes also from 8083, Shimane. And it means through the idea of plumpness, a cardinal number, as if a surplus above the perfect seven, 818, 18th, 18,000. All right. And it also means uh, greasy, gross, fat, rich, plenteous. And that word, uh, uh, it is also another word in there called shaman, which means to shine, be make oily, gross, wax fat, make fat, become fat. Somewhere along the line in this scriptural eighth month, the Most High is going to enlarge you. He's going to enlarge your territory, enlarge your coast, but make sure that you're in good standing because as we read at the open in Proverbs chapter 28, verse nine, it says, he that turns away his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer shall be abomination. All right, very important that we're mindful of that. And that's one of the keys to get our prayer lives operating in the right direction. Some of you all been receiving fool's gold from years from all types of deities outside the Ark of uh, uh, Mercy and Grace, the Ark of the Most High. And some of you all are literally holding on to those, those voices and those whispers in your head. If that ain't adding up to the foundation of our belief, the foundation of our belief is Torah. If them voices is telling you to do something that ain't adding up and being found in Torah, I suggest you go check yourself in and get your mind looked at and get your head examined because you're listening to a, a, a voice that is leading you astray. Many have been led astray for years, okay? And they're comfortable with being led astray. I praise and thank the Most High for their pandemic, all right? This pandemic in 2020, I praise and thank the Most High that he, he shut everything down, put everybody on lockdown status for a moment, and then slowly but surely allowed people to reintegrate back into moving around. But what happened was some did not sit down and read the Bible. Some didn't at all. I'm talking about either Israel or even on this first day. Some of you all didn't read the Bible and wonder why I don't want to talk to you. Some of you all didn't don't read the Bible, but yet and still you want to enter into debates and have contention.
Go get a merch and get those sins up off you. Maybe you'll feel better. All right? It's very important that we ask the children of the Most High, if we want to do the word, let's do the word. If not, let's close our books and make up stuff like everybody else on the first day. All right? Let's get real with this. All right? Somewhere along the line, we got to really look at ourselves and ask ourselves one pertinent question. What are we saying? What are we doing? Most of them running around, Holland Bottle was nailed to the tree, is looking crazy now because the last chapter in the book, and uh, verse 14 so talks about blessed are they who do these commandments that they may enter into the tree, into the um, city of life, and all of that. So we got to figure out what we saying, what we doing, how we moving. I know I ain't quote that verbatim from Revelation 22, 14, but you know what I mean. You got to keep them commandments. And I'm going to get your blood off of my hands. We got a very, very important topic. We're going to be in this topic for a while, too. Um, this topic is dealing with fear, okay? I know some of you may have read the title or may not have read the title, but you can see this in its entirety over on YouTube or you can play it back here on Facebook. I hope and pray that each and every one get pencil and paper because what we're dealing with is a very, very important topic. We're right now in the book of Genesis dealing with the word fear. And that word comes across in uh, four ways. Mora, M-O-W-R-A, Yare, Y-A-R-E, Yare, Y-I-R-E-H, and Pakat, P-A-C-A-D, all right? My question to you right now is, who do you fear and why? The reason why I'm asking this question mm -hmm. is because if you truly, truly, truly fear the one that destroyed both the body, the soul, and the spirit, then you actually uh, uh, may have a chance of being a, 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 a servant of his, a ebed of his. But if you don't fear the most high and, 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 and you constantly running around saying and doing all you saying and doing, it's going to be evident, it's going to be plain that you don't fear him, okay? My question was, who do you fear and why? A lot of people are fearing everything on this planet. Oh, I fear my food stamps uh, uh, don't get cut off. Oh, I, I, I fear I fear they take my section away, ate away. If Israel showed up feared the most high, it wouldn't be some people tonight howling about this of one. If Israel showed enough feared the most high, a lot of Israel would be on the same line, same page, same time. If a lot of Israel feared the most high, it wouldn't be no floating sabbats running around here. People don't uh, 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 all of a sudden want to uh, uh, start inventing dates. If Israel feared the most high, they wouldn't have uh, took the Hebrew language and came up with a ghetto version of it. Because now what has happened is people are calling on deities and don't even know it. See, if Israel feared the most high, a lot of what we saying and doing wouldn't be going down the way it is. I took a look at this word fear. All right. I started with the Oxford Pocket American Dictionary. That word fear meant unpleasant and an unpleasant emotion caused by exposure to danger, expectation of pain, a state of alarm, dread, or fearful respect. All right, I'm going to tell you something about this word fear. This word fear has uh, uh, eight other variations for a total of nine variations of the word fear in scripture, and it appears 528 times. Again, I'm going to ask you, who do you fear and why? All right, I took a look at the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the etymology dictionary to see the history of this word fear. They said it came from the 12th century, all right, as a verb. 
And it also uh, uh, meant, uh, uh, it came through as a noun as well from the Middle English, all right? And it was the word F-E-R, unexpected danger, peril, going back to Germanic and all of this, ambush, danger. It was an old Norse word for evil, mischief, play, all right? It's very important that we understand this word fear. Because as we get into what we're going to deal with today, and we're not going to be too long, we're going to deal with our, our Genesis chapter 9. That's going to be our very first, uh, 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 our very first uh, 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 scripture. All right? Our very first scripture is in Genesis chapter 9. All right? And the very first time this word Fear appears anywhere in scripture is here in Genesis chapter 9, all right? And it's very important that we take a look at this and see what it's going to do. We're going to read verses 1 through 29, and we definitely is uh, uh, going to take a look at verse 2, all right? Very important. Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, it says, and El blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. All right? Didn't we hear this before with the same word replenish? All right? We still in Genesis. All right? We in the ninth chapter. First chapter, we heard these things in chapter one and chapter two. And by the time we get to chapter six, everything that he made and saw was good became evil. And it repented the most high that he made man, all right? It's very important that we understand what is going on and how things are moving, all right? Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. And El blessed Noah and said, and his sons, and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moves upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Watch verse three. All right. And I'm, I'm going to jump on this after I read it in its entirety. Verse three says, every moving thing that lives shall be meat. For you, even as the green herb, have I given you all things. Take a look at this word me here. Honey, can you pull that word meat up? In Genesis 9, 3, take a look at this word me here. Because there's some uh, 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 discrepancies in Israel dealing with uh, 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 Noah child precepts versus what was said in the garden. This is the second go round of us hearing these things as far as uh, 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 the Most High recommissioning. We had a, a, a law in the garden, the first man and woman did. Um, they had to be fruitful and multiply was their charge. He had to dress and keep the garment was his work, his job duty and all of that. Here in verse 3 in Genesis 9, it says, Every moving thing that lives shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. All right? That word meat, what is that word? It's food. What else? Consume. Devour. Eat. Food. Meat. So it ain't no discrepancy about what the Most High is talking here. Okay? In Genesis 9, verse 3. Every moving thing that lives shall be meat for you. All right? Now, when we, by the time we get to Exodus, he read the Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He redefines what meat is good for. Us. If you're dealing with some of Israel, and some of Israel is telling you that you're wrong for eating meat. Show them this verse. Every moving thing that lives shall be meat for you, 
even as the green herb have I given you all things. Verse 4, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. All right, so this is telling you don't eat any blood. All right, it goes on to tell you. Verse 5, surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheds man's blood by man shall be, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of El made he man. And you be ye fruitful and multiply and bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And else spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And be and I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, of every beast of the earth with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And El said, this is the token of the covenant which I made, make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. It shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I'll remember my covenant, which is between me and you. And every living creature of all flesh in the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between El and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And El said unto Noah, which is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth, and the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark with Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Cain. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And of them was the whole earth overspread. All right, 20. And Noah began to be a husband, man. He planted a vineyard. He drunk of the wine and was drunken and was uncovered within his tent. And him, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his Abba and told his two brethren with Baal. Shem and Yepheth took a garment, laid it upon their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their Abba, and their faces were backward, and they saw not their Abba's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a Ebed, a Ebed, shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be Yah, El of Shem, and Canaan shall be his Ebed. El shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his Ebed. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. Hallelujah. Let's go back and take a look at verse 2. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, Upon all that moves upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. This word fear, all right, was entry number 4172, and it was the biblical Hebrew word mora, M-O-W-R-A, and mora is from number 3372, and mora means fear, a fearful thing or deed. Fear, terror, dread, terribleness, all right? Mora means fear. The noun mora, which appears 13 times, is used exclusively of the fear of being before a superior kind of being, all right? So here in Genesis 9, verse 2, this is the kind of fear that the animals had that we were superior beings. Although a 500, a 5,000 pound 
silverback gorilla can rip you in half. And he's a vegetarian. Although uh, uh, the lion is the king of the jungle, he still will have to be in fear of men. All right. It went on to say that in this um, word fear was also the word yari, number 3372. And it is a primary root. It means to fear, to revere, cause to frighten, fear, afraid, terrible, terrible thing, mm -hmm. dreadful, reverence, fearful, mm -hmm. terrible acts, and to be afraid of, stand in awe and fear. Very important that we understand this. In this chapter right here in Genesis 9, this is talking about how the Most High gave the animals, all right? Well, he gave it to us. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. All the beasts of the earth were supposed to fear and dread Noah and his sons. All right? We're going to keep it moving from here. Let's go over to Genesis chapter 15. We're going to start with verse 1. All right? It's an interesting one right here. It says, after these things, the word of Yah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. You dealing with anybody still wearing that pagan shield, uh, calling it the star David and the star Shlomo and all of that? It's pagan, all right? Right here starts the most high with Abram, all right? He didn't tell Adam. He didn't say, uh, I'm your shield. He telling Abram this, all right? So if you want to mark this scripture, mark this scripture because in the Psalms, David is saying how the Most High is his shield, his buckler, he's, he's my this, he's my that. He ain't trusting no ring or no little pentagram looking thing. He trusted in the Most High. And this is where a lot of we Israel need to get our, our, out of trust in man and get our trust back in the Most High. That's why I ask the question, who do you fear? A lot of you all are sitting around celebrating some man's holy day. The Most High told you when his Passover was, the 14th day of the first month at even, all right? He told you that. But some of you all are dealing with leadership that causes you all to wait a whole month before you start the year. Where you do that at? Even a pagan calendar. Don't stop time. Somebody explain this to me. The pagan calendar is hanging on some of y'all's wall. It go from January to, de to December. And from December to the, uh, January, it ain't no stop at your time. They hollering about on the 31st. In a few more minutes, it'll be a new year. So how does Israel stop time and expect the Most High to be pleased with that? Who do you fear, Israel? Who do you fear? You fear them in the congregation, in the assembly that might take your seat, might throw you out, might take back all those uh, Shakespearean costume clothes you done spent thousands and thousands of dollars for? Do them, do, them, do them clothes protect you from pandemics? Do them clothes shield you from uh, 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 the spray of radiation? We got to figure out what we're saying and doing. All right? Genesis 15 and 1. After these things, the word of Yah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Yael, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of Yah came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he shall come forth out of thine own vows, shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward the heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in Yah and they counted 
and, and Yah counted it to him for lawfulness. Look at verse 6. All he told Abram was, look to the sky. He said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, unto him, so shall thy seed be. Very important that we understand whose seed is who. All right? Very important. Because some of you all are how about you see the Abraham? Messiah told you, quit. Now nah, you see the Hashatan. Hashatan, your father. And I can tell by the way some of you sit up with that same old ancient foul spirit that scared of water. You don't want to be relieved of your uh, 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 foul spirit. So, so you just want to sit around and make everybody else miserable. Israel, you want to separate yourself, all right? Verse 6, he believed in Yah and he counted it to him for lawfulness. He said unto him, I am Yah, thy, I am Yah that brought thee out of Ur, out of the child geese, to give this land to inherit it. And he said, Yah, El, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, take me a heifer three years old and a she-goat of three years old, a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy Abba's in Shalom Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Listen to verses 13 and 14. All right. 16 says. In the fourth generation, they shall come here again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it come, came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lap, lamp that passed between those pieces in the same day Yah made a covenant with Abram saying unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Mitrium unto the great river the river Euphrates the Kenites and the Kenzazites and the Kadamonites the Hittites the Perizzites and the Rephaim and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Yebusites hallelujah Let's take a look at this again in uh, uh, verse 15, chap chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of Yah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy great exceeding reward. That word fear here, all right, was actually entry number 3372, the word Yare, all right? And it means to revere uh, to fear, cause to frighten, to be terrible, terrible thing, dreadful, reverence, fearful, terrible act, to be afraid, stand in awe and fear, all right? The Most High already knew Abram had a little shaking going on in his boots. And as uh, Mike Epps called it, he probably had the bubble guts. I don't know. But I just know this, when the Most High uh, uh, sends an angelic host uh, uh, near you or to you, from even deep down inside of you, you're going to have a reverential awe or an alarming uh, 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 type of situation going on in you to spark awareness about what's coming at you. Some of you all are ignoring fearing the most high because you rather fear me. Let's look at verse 13 right quick in Genesis 15. It says, he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. Now, this is prophetically being told to Abram 
long before Moshe stepped on the scene in Exodus chapter 1 and Exodus chapter 2. All right? So 14 says, also, that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out uh, with great substance. Some of you all don't know that what happened in Deuteronomy 28, 68, um, what happened with the children of Israel and Mitzrayim and all of that was prophetically spoken about here in Genesis. It started off saying in 13, and he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. All right. People are saying that the Native Americans that was in these United States are, 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 are Israel. And, and some are saying they're not Israel. I don't know. All I know is the scripture tell me that the earth is the most highs and the fullness thereof. So wherever you at, wherever you, you live in that in these United States or outside, please make sure you're getting these commandments in you and on you. Okay? Because that's what it's going to come down to. It ain't coming down to all of the shenanigans that most are trying to sell to you, all right? Some of you all every week, whether it's the seventh day, whether it's the first day, you're sitting down buying a bunch of shenanigans as far as spending your time listening to garbage, dealing with garbage doctrine, strange doctrine, and then you got to pay for this. Some of you all are being paid, are paying to be, be lied to, okay? What are you saying? What are you doing? You say, well, you know, well, that brother there, he got a lot of mouth to be on this video. Believe me, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, most people don't even want to have that conversation. All right. And that's real talk about scripture. All right. Everybody's so used to hiding under the guise of a, a, a form of lawfulness, but denying the power from such turn away, the scripture tells us. What are we saying? What are we doing? All right, they go Abram right there. And that word in uh, Genesis 15 2, 15 1 was Yari, Y A R E, and it means to frighten, be afraid, terrible, terrible thing, dreadful, reverence, fearful, terrible acts, to fear, to revere, cause to frighten. All right, the presence of the Most High will cause you to do that. If you got somebody coming up on you, hollering about they deal with these scriptures. And you don't get no quiver in you or nothing. That person full of themselves and not the Wuah. All right. Let's go over to uh, Genesis chapter 20. We're going to read from verse 1 through uh, 18. It is written. Now, notice his name change. We just read about Abram over in Genesis 15. Genesis 20, verse 1 says, and Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. And Abram said of Sarah, his Isha, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But El came to Abimelech in a dream. All right. This is where is this starting at. All right. It started with Abram. Verse 2. All right, his wife was his sister. All right, and you saw how that was passed down from Abraham to Esau to Yakub. All right, and even now, you know, some of you all got to act like brother and sister on paper in order to, to make it in these <laughs> cruel and rough times, you know. All right, let's go on to three, verse three. But El came to Abram in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou was taken, um, the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. See, in them days, this kind of thing meant something, all right? Nowadays, half people don't even want to respect that, all right? Men and women, all right? Verse 4. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Master, will thou slay also a, lost, a lawful nation? Said he unto me, she is my sister, and she, even as she herself say, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands, have I done this? All right? 
even though she agreed and rolled with the story, all right, this man is caught in the middle. And he's trying to explain to the Most High, you know, he's innocent of this. Verse 6, El said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou did this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore, suffer I thee not to touch her. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. He shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore, Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his ebeds and told all these things in their ears, and the men were so afraid. Then Abimelech called Abram and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not be done. All right? Some of you all are listening to people saying some stuff about some people that them people shouldn't be saying, but you shouldn't even be trying to listen to. All right? We're going to keep it moving. Watch this. And Abimelech said unto Abram, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought surely the fear of El is not in this place, and they will slay me for my Isha's sake. And yet indeed she is my Isha. She is the daughter of my Abba, but not the daughter of my Amma. And she became my wife. Hold on. I don't even want to go no further. We want to stop this right here and now because I've seen a lot of people going in on a post that I shared from somebody else's page about uh, in this day and time, it was a female cousin and it was a, a male cousin and, and they hooked up to the point where they, they, they nasty with it. They sexual and everything with it all on uh, uh, Facebook and uh, social media with their little nude exchanges of pictures and nasty little pictures, abominable pictures, all right? Torah said this, uh, uh, stated this way back when. We in Genesis chapter 20, all right? So already thousands of years went in between Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 1, and Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. It was thousands of years, all right? Thousands of years. In this day and time, don't bring me around nobody hollering about this my cousin, but she my wife. I'm going to throw rocks at you and her. Ain't nothing biblical sound, biblically sound about that. Nothing at all. All right? Nothing at all. Incest goes against rendering unto Caesar those things that is Caesar's. All right? Some of you all are so knee deep and want, so lustful and wanting to get into polygamy that uh, you all are willing to sleep with your own cousins. I remember being in South Dakota. Most of them that like to use that, that N-word. I used to tell them all the time, oh, yeah, people like you that use that word, y'all the byproduct of inbreeding. And then they had to ask me, what's that? I had to explain it for them. But I, I praise and thank the most high for getting me up out of there before I couldn't leave because <laughs> it was wild out there, boy. It was wild. But nowhere in this day and time, should should nobody be trying to sleep with their family member or loved one? Not even uh, uh, playing like that, telling somebody, uh, this is my wife, but she's my sister and all of this. It's not called for in this day and time. It's not necessary, all right? So look at how the fear of this man, uh, 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 the fear... Uh, that was going on uh, with this man Abimelech uh, uh, in verse 5. Well, we're going to come back to this, all right? But here in verse 12, this was the breakdown. Yet indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. That was cool for way back then, because all of them did not live in one house, all right? The daughter, he said... She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. 
So evidently Abraham's father had another wife on the other side of town and this child grew up in that house. They didn't grow up in the same house. Ew, that's nasty. Just thinking about this. We got uh, verse seven showing us the very first uh, uh, instance of intercessory prayer. I had so many stones thrown at me uh, uh, from Israel when we started uh, 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 talking about prayer and prayer the weapon. Do we start to hear Genesis 20? Because this was the first instance that you really clearly could see somebody pray for somebody else. And, and this is the most high talking. Uh, if Sister Carolyn was here, she'd show you her book. Her book would be in red. The words are in red. Verse 7 says, now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a Navi, a prophet. So he, him, uh, 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 Abraham was the very first uh, uh, prophet. And he shall pray for thee, the very first prayer intercessor, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Very first instance of intercessory prayer for those who got a spirit of prayer. That's why we made the announcement at the beginning. You can join us tonight and every night, 11 p.m., except for on the sixth day at 11 p.m. That's actually the seventh day, which is the Sabbath. But from uh, Saturday all the way up until Thursday, you can join us 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for intercessory prayer or touching and grin, praise and encouragement, exhortation of the word. It ain't going to be long. It's just people coming together. They read three scriptures, um, take some prayer requests, and then we're going to pray. And I want everybody to start praying, especially those who are not immersed, start praying about being immersed, all right, for the remission of your sins, all right? Um, let's go on. Uh, Genesis 20, verse 13. It came to pass when El caused me to wander from my Abba's house that I said unto her, this is thy kindness, which thou shalt show unto me at every place, whither we shall come, say of me, he is my ox. And Abimelech took sheep, oxen, men servants, women servants, and gave them unto Abraham and restored him, Sarah, his wife. And Abimelech said, behold, my land is before thee, dwell here, it please dwell where it pleases thee. And unto Sarah, he said, behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver, Behold, he is to be a covering of thy eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other, thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto El, and El healed Abimelech and his Isha and his maidservants, and they bare children. For Yah had fast closed up all the wounds of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Some of you all are running around and keep trying to go sit, go sit, sipping off the gossip, gossip of somebody who already uh, entangled with their own demons and entangled in their own confusement, but you going to still ride and listen to that mess? I'm going to tell you some real good stuff. The Most High does not play when it comes down to his events, all right? Some of you all are running around as if you know, you got this thing on lock. Oh, I ain't got to listen to this. I ain't got to do that. Fine. Keep you and your sin ridden self over there. All right? That simple, that plain. Let's go on. We're going over now to uh, Genesis chapter 21. No, let's go back to 20 and 11. Abraham said, uh, because I thought surely the fear of El is not in this place and they will slay me for my Isha's sake. All right. Here in Genesis 20, verse 11, this word is number 3374. All right. Very important that you understand this word, fear. It's Y-I-R-A-H, and it means fear and reverence. So you're starting to see now that uh, 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 you got to have a reverence for the most high. Some of you all are listening to people that don't have no reverence for nothing, all right? And, 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 and a lot of you all are, are rather, rather revere men than the most high. 
Or what did he say back then in the Psalms? He said, holy and reverend is my name. Most of you all sat up under and sat with and still up under Reverend Dr. Passer, please. Where he at during the uh, pandemic? Huh? If he if he's that great of a person, how come he ain't in a helicopter over these United States waving a magic jacket trying to make these, these things subside? There's no power in that garbage. I was having a conversation with somebody about that word Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. I said, check this out. You keep talking about, you know, use this, use this, use this. Well, how come this Bible over here, the 1611, call them something totally different? We as the people of the Most High, look up the word salvation in Torah. Four times it's there. Number 3444. Use that for Messiah name throughout all the scriptures. All right? Remember, you got to have a reverence. All right? Abraham was using it here in verse 11, trying to say, I thought surely that the reverence of El is not in this place, and they will slay me for my Isha's sake. I mean, yet yeah, indeed she is my sister. She is the daughter of my Abba, but not the daughter of my Amma, and she became my Isha. Look, my earthly uh, uh, sisters, my own biological sisters, uh, when they met my wife, they said, y'all better uh, make sure y'all ain't brother and sister. And these are people I grew up in the same house with, all right? <laughs> and I'm sure Rich Love ain't been nowhere. But my thing is, you got to continue to align yourself in the Most High's word, will, and way because you don't want to be like Abraham here when he's dealing with this. Abraham is like, you know, I thought for sure, you know, I, I, I got a beautiful wife. She, they going to kill me for my wife. Some of you dudes running around here now, all right? Running around here, I keep telling you, come on, let's pray, come on, let's pray, come on, let's pray. You keep wanting to bounce here and there, here and there, this camp, that camp, this assembly, that assembly. One day you're going to walk into an assembly in a camp, you're going to be sleeping over there in one section in a whole nother building, and your wife going to be sleeping over here in a whole nother building with two or three men and nothing but women in there. You all better wake up quick, all right? Ask the Most High to continue to have mercy upon you in all that is said and done so that you're able to move according to his election and purpose. And you don't have to pawn your wife off when it comes to people. All right. I can I can see some of y'all trying to trying to uh, uh, be Jacob with uh, a Caesar. I understand that all day. And even the Most High see that. But but nah, nothing else after that. Nah. It ain't right. It don't even sound right. Let's go on to um our next stop. Our next stop is uh Genesis chapter 21. We're going to read from 1 through 34. All right. It is written. And Yah visited Sarah and he as he had said, and Yah did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which El spoken to him. And Abraham was the name, and Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Esau. And Abraham circumcised his son Esau, being eight days old, as Yah had commanded him. See, this ain't even written yet. Not even written yet, but they following commandments. All right? Verse 5. Abraham was 100 years old, and his son Esau was born unto him. And Sarah said, El have made me to laugh so that all that will hear will laugh with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck, for I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Esau was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Mitrian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, 
For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son Esau. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Mm -hmm. And El said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman and all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Esau shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation because he is thy seed. The only reason why uh, Ishmael got anything because he was uh, Abraham's seed, 14. Abraham rose up early in the morning, took bread, a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar. Listen, he took bread, a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and the child and sent her away, and she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. A bottle of water and some bread. All right, and the child. Don't tell me that man was brown, wasn't brown. All right, that's that's the kind of move brown people do. Throw all your stuff in a garbage bag and leave it on the front porch. All right, <laughs> verse fifteen. The water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. She and she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, "Let me not see the death of the child." And she sat over against them and lift up her voice and wept. And El heard the voice of the lad. All right? El heard the mighty one of uh, Abraham, Esau, and Yaqub. He heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of El called the Hagar out of heaven and said unto him, her, what ailest thee, Hagar? Fear not, for El have heard the voice of the lad where he is, Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. And El opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And El was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his armor took him a Isha out of the land of Mitrium. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, El is with thee and all that thou do. Now therefore swear unto me hereby, El, that thou will not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water, which Abimelech's Ebeds had violently taken away. And Abimelech said, I wot not who have done this thing, neither did thou tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but today. And Abraham took Sheik and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech. Both of them made a covenant. And Abimelech and Abraham set seven ewe lambs of flock by themselves, and Abimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven you lambs which thou hast set by themselves? He said, For these seven you lambs shall thou take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me that I have digged this well. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba, because they swear both of them. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech rose up and fight called the chief captain of the host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of Yah, the everlasting El. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. Hallelujah. Let's go back to verse 17 and check out this word, uh, uh, fear. And El heard the voice of the lad and the angel of El called the Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What ails thee, Hagar? Fear not, for El have heard the voice of the lad where he is. That word fear right there, again, is the word Yari, okay? The very first uh, uh, word we, um, excuse me, the second word we dealing with here. And Yari is one of those words you really, really, really got to pay attention to because it's a primary root. 
It means to fear, to revere, cause to frighten, be afraid, terrible, terrible thing, dreadful reverence, fearful, terrible acts, and uh, to be afraid, standing all in fear. All right. So literally in verse 17, all right, some of you all are praying to the most high when you should close your mouth and let your child pray for you. All right. The most high said here in verse 17, and El heard the voice of the lad. Okay. El heard the voice of the lad. When you look up this G-O-D word from Genesis chapter one in your Strong's Concordance. Is going to bring you back to Elohim or El, okay? This G word is only a title. So when you're standing here shaking and wiggling, hollering about GD said, and LD said, and this one said, which one are you talking about? All right? It's more than one. Look at the, look at the back of a $1 bill. They holler about it in GD they trust. Which one? All right? This is prime example right here that sometimes a parent prayer for a child cannot get through to help that child, whereas the most high will literally hear that child quicker than that parent. All right, it's something in the innocence of a child with the most high. The age of accountability, uh, uh, I keep reading, is 20 years old on up, a uh, uh, number 20 years old on up. Uh, 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 grab those who are 20 years old on up, all right? So some of you all are literally uh, 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 in positions where it's the most I don't want to hear from you because you come in with the crocodile tears, same old mess, same old junk. It's the spiritual masturbation thing. You plan with yourself, thinking you plan with the most high, and you wonder why your prayer is not heard. Let your child pray for you. Let your child pray for you. Some of you all really, really, really need to understand that, that somewhere along the line, um, you will need to literally let your child intercede on your behalf. Very important that you understand this. Very important that you hear this. All right. I hope and pray that everybody is understanding what's going on, how it's going on, and Understand that sometimes the effectual fervent prayer of that child might avail much, especially if that child lawful. Some of you all are so in tune with fearing man, fearing man, fearing man. The most I gave you a way out in 2020. All you had to do was sit back in your house and read your Bible and compare all them DVDs, all them VHS tapes. All them little things that uh, 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 Reverend Dr. Beggy was saying over the years. And when you found them things not to be adding up in the word, you could have cut loose then. But some of you all fear men. You don't fear the most high. Look, the, the easiest three piece I read about in the back of the Bible book says, fear the most high, resist the adversary, and he shall flee. Some of you all got it so twisted that you fearing man and going to the most high any old kind of way, thinking he going to pull rock and mean out, thinking he going to pull mercy out, going to pull some Ahaba out for you. Nah, if you a Ahaba me, you should have kept my tour. Huh? Keep messing around. Keep messing around. All right? Let's go on to our next stop. Our fifth stop on today's journey is Genesis chapter 26. And again, this one is the same word, Yari, and we're going to read from 1 through 35. Here we go. There was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham and Esau went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And Yah appeared unto him and said, Go not down in the Mitzrayim, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee. All right? The Most High is telling you where to go. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed 
I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham by Abba. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Esau dwelling Gerer, and the men of the place asked him of his Isha, and he said, she is my sister. <laughs> you see how this passed from, from the other <laughs> to the son, <laughs> all right? For he feared to say, she is my Isha, let's said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca because she was fair to look upon. I mean, I, I can understand that in uh, uh, this day and time. I got a beautiful wife. But I'm going to tell you something. You think you, uh, I'm going to be scared to tell you, nah, she my wife, all right? I ain't scared to tell you. I ain't scared to tell nobody, all right? She my wife. Now, after that, however way you want to get down with it, we can get down with the get down. That's what I specialize in, to get down, all right? <laughs> it goes on to say, And Abraham and Bimelech called Esau and said, Behold of a surety, she is thy wife, and how said thou, she is my sister. And Esau said unto him, Because I said, lest I die for her. And Abimelech said, What is this thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have leaned with thy wife, and thou should have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that touched this man or his Isha shall surely be put to death. Then Esau sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. Yah blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks, possession of herds, great store of Ebeds, and the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his Abba's Ebez had digged in the days of Abraham, his Abba, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Esau, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Esau departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Esau digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham, his Abba, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his Abba had called them. And Esau Sebes digged in the valley and found there a well of spring and water, and the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Esau's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek because they strove with him. And they digged another well and strove for that also, and he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth, and he said, For now, Yah have made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba, and Yah appeared unto him the same night and said, I am yet, I am El, the El of Abraham. Thy Abba, fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my Ebed, Abraham's sake. And he built the altar there, and called upon the name of Yah, and pitched his tent there, and there Esau's Ebeds digged a well. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar, and Hazuza, one of his friends, and Phicol, the chief captain of his army. And Esau said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me? saying, ye hate me and have sent me away from you. And they said, we saw certainly that Yah was with thee. And we said, let there be now an oath between us, even between us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee, that thou will do us no hurt as we have not touched thee. And as we have done unto thee nothing but good and have sent thee away in Shalom, thou art now the blessed of Yah. And he made them a feast, and they did eat and drink, and they rose up eight times in the morning and swear one to another. Esau sent them away, and they departed from him in Shalom. And it came to pass the same day that Esau's Ebeds came and told him concerning the well which they had digged, and said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Sheba, 
Be, therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to Isha Yehudith, the daughter of Bari, the Hittite, and Bashamath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grief of mine unto Esau and to Rebekah. Hallelujah. We're in Genesis chapter 26. Let's take a look at verse 24. It says, And Yah appeared unto him the same night and said, I am Yah, the El of Abraham, the Abba. Fear not. For I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my Ebed, Abraham's sake. All right? That word right there is the word Yari, which again means to fear, revere, frighten, be afraid, terrible. Dreadful, reverence, fearful, terrible acts to be afraid, standing or fear. Very important that you understand this. Here, um, this is the Most High telling Abraham to fear not. Okay, you already going to have a, a reverential awe in you. You already going to have something like emotional displacements in you. When uh, um, the angel of the Most High or the Most High himself uh, uh, breathes through your home, okay? You all, you will feel it somewhere along the line in uh, uh, your body. You will feel it. And in your soul, you will feel it, all right? So understand that this fear that the Most uh, Abraham had for the Most High was great. Even uh, 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 the fear that Abimelech had for uh, Esau. You know, saying that this is my wife. I'd have been like, who your daddy? <laughs> Seems like I heard this somewhere before. Who your daddy? All right. Let's go on to Genesis chapter 31. Now, Genesis 31 get real interesting. All right. Real interesting because we got a stop or two along the way. All right, Genesis 31, verse 1 is written. We read him from 1 through 55, and we got two verses in here we're going to stop at, 42 and 53, all right? And it's the biblical Hebrew word, Pekah. It is written. And he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Yaakov have taken away all that was our Abba's, and of that which was our Abba's, have he gotten all this glory? And Yaqub beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And Yah said unto Yaqub, Return unto the land of thy Abbas, and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. Yaqub sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your Abbas' countenance, that it is not toward me as before. But the El of my Abba have been with me. And you know that with all my power I have served your Abba. And your Abba have deceived me and changed my wages ten times. All right? <laughs> Let's come on. We got to take a look at that word, Yaqub, all right? <laughs> all right? Your Abba have deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but El suffered him not to hurt me. If he said, thus, the speckle shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckle. And if he said, thus, the ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Thus, El have taken away the cattle of your Abba and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in the dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of El spake unto me in a dream, saying, Yaqub. And I said, Here am I. He said, Lift up now thy eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, and grizzled, for I have seen all that Laban does unto thee. I am the El of Beth El, where thou anointest the vows of vow unto me now from this land and return unto the land of thy kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our Abba's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? 
for he has sold us and have quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which El have taken from our Abba, that is ours and our children's, now then, whatsoever El have said unto thee, do. Then Yaku rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels. And he carried away all his cattle, all his goods, which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Pandaram, for to go to Esau, his Abba, in the land of Canaan. And the man went to Shear's sheep, and Raquel had stolen the images that were her Abbas. And Yaqub stole away on the whiz to the man the Syrian, and that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told the man on the third day that Yaqub was fled. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. And El came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Yaqub, either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Yaqub. Now Yaqub had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the Mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Yaqub, What hast thou done? that thou hast stolen away unawares to me and carried away my daughters as captives, taken with the sword. Wherefore did thou flee away secretly and steal away from me and did not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth, with songs, with tabret, with a heart, has not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt, but the El of Yah Abba spake unto me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Yaqub, either good or bad. And now, though thou would needs be gone, because thou sore longest after thy Abba's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my Elohim? And Yaqub answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure thou would take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou finds thy Elohim, let him not live. Before our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Yaqub knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Yaqub's tent, into Leah's tent, into the two maidservants' tent, but he found them not. Then went he out of Leah's tent, and entered into Raquel's tent. All right, hold on. We're going to stop right here for a second. Verse 33 is going to speak some things into some of you all's lives. Either you're going to fear the most high in his word, or you're going to fear men. And this is concerning that multiple wife thing, all right? Everyone has their tent, all right? Laban went into Yaqub tent. Then he went into Leah tent. Then he went into the two maid service tents. And then he finally went into Raquel tents. All right? Even the maids had their own tents. Some of you all can't call no room inside of a house a tent. No, that tent was the dwelling. So some of you all need to, uh, uh, with your multiples, you need to set a house here, set a house there, set a house there. Maybe side to side, side by side, maybe across the street. Maybe you buy the whole cul-de-sac. But according to scripture, everybody had a tent. We got to figure this out, Israel. We got to figure this out because some of you all are just fornicating demons. All right? Some of you all are just lustful and fornicating, you know, calling in a marriage. And you got you, you leaving one bedroom. After one, don't even wash up, don't change. Now you're knocking on the next bedroom door. What's going on, girl? Take your panties off. You ain't even been in the shower yet. That's some dirty, nasty stuff. And I don't think that was designed to be like that. Even from here. I'm going to tell you this. Some of you all say, well, uh, uh, Abraham was, you know, had multiple wives. True, granted. I give you that. Show me a story from Torah to Tanakh or even Apocrypha 
that the multiple wife thing actually worked out. Look, some of you all not getting it. Show me where the multiple wife thing worked out from anybody in Torin to not. All right? It's always somebody with some hurt feelings, some civil rival, civil, civil rival, sibling rivalry, and then you got some other shenanigans going on. We got to con constantly figure out what we're saying, what we're doing in the midst of our lives, all right? Each of them had a tent. Verse 34, now Raquel had taken the images, put them in the camel's furniture, sat upon them, and Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. She said to her, Abba, let it not displease my master that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. And Yaqub was wroth and chose with Laban, and Yaqub answered and said to Laban, what is my trespass, what is my sin, that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge between us both. This twenty years have I been with thee, thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee, I bear the loss of it. Of my hand did thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by mm -hmm. night. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I've served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. Except L of the L of my Abba, the L of Abraham, and the fear of Esau had been with me, surely thou hast sent me away now empty. El have seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee yesternight. And Laban answered and said unto Yaqub, these daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine, and what can I do this day unto these my daughters or unto their children which they have born? Now therefore come, thou let us make a covenant, I am thou, let it be for witness between me and thee. Yaqub took a stone, set it up for a pillar. Yaqub said unto his brother and gathered um, stones. And they took stones, made a heap, and they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Ye Yeager Sahadutha, but Yaqub called it Galid. And Laban said, this heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called the lead. And misput for he said, Yah have Yah watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, El is witness between me and thee. And Laban said unto Yaqub, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar which I have cast between me and thee. This heap shall be witness, and this pillar shall be witness that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The Ella Abraham, the El of Nahor, the El of their Abba judge between us, and Yaqub swear by the fear of his Abba Esau. And Yaqub offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread, and they did eat bread and tarry all night in the mount. Early in the morning, Laban rose up, kissed his sons, his daughters, and blessed them, and Laban departed, returned unto his place. Hallelujah. I, I'm going to tell you something. It's very important that we uh, understand what's going on here, all right? In this, in this example, in verse, uh, what was it, 42 and 53, all right, each of these have the same word for uh, 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 fear, and it's paka, p a c h a d, and it means to be startled, a sudden alarm. To be startled, a sudden alarm. Okay, 
to be startled, a sudden alarm. Very important that uh, you understand that some things are going to startle you, okay? Some things is going to have you like, oh, wow, you know, some deep stuff, all right? So very important that you understand how the word fear is being used in this instance, okay? Let's go on. Our next stop is in Genesis chapter 32. And our verse is in verse 11. We ain't got too much more to go, all right? And I mean, I don't understand what you got going on in Sabbath anyhow. Oh, I forgot. Some of most of the Israel do their little business and all that still on the Sabbath day. It's crazy. Genesis 32. And Yaqub went on his way, and the angels of El met him. And when Yaqub saw them, he said, this is El's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanim. And Yaqub sent messengers before him to Esau, his, uh, his brother, into the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, thus shall ye speak unto my master Esau. Thy Ebed Yaqub says thus, I have sojourned with Laban, Laban and stayed there until now. I have oxen, asses, flocks, men servants, women servants, and I have sent to tell my master that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Yaqub saying, we came to thy brother Esau and he also comes to meet thee and 400 men with him. And Yaqub was greatly afraid. Come on. Some of you all are running your mouths. Y'all doing stuff to people. Y'all acting in certain ways around other people. And then when showing up, the people is on you hear about they, they on their way to you. Now, all of a sudden, you want to get nervous. All of a sudden, that, that, that slick talk escapes you. All of a sudden, all right? Look at your cool here. Scripture say he was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him the flocks, the herds, the camels into two bands. And said, if Esau come to the one company and spite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. Yaku said, O El of my Abba Abraham and El of my Abba Esau, Yah, which said unto me, return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy Ebed, for with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two men. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the armor with and, and the mother with the children. And thou said, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. He lodged there that same night. And took of uh, that which came to his hand, a present for Esau, his brother. Two hundred she goats, two, um, 20 he goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams. 30 milk camels with their coats, 40 kine, 10 bulls, 20 she asses, 10 foals. He delivered them into the hand of his ebeds, every, every drove by themselves. And said unto his ebeds, pass over before me and put a space between drove and drove. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau, my brother, meets thee, and asks thee, saying, Whose art thou? And will thou, whither goest thou? And whose are these before thee? Then thou shalt say, They be thy ebed, Yaqub. It is a present sent unto my master Esau, and behold, also he is behind us. And so commanded he the second and the third and all that followed to drove, saying, uh, on this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when ye find him. And say ye moreover, behold, thy Ebed Yaqub is behind us, for he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me. And afterward, I will see his face. Peradventure he will accept of me. So went the present over before him and his self lodged that night in the company. He rose up that night, took his two wives, his two women servants, and his 11 sons, and passed over the four Jabba. 
And he took them and sent them over the brook and went over and sent over that he had. And Yahoo was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against them, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Yaku's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Yaku. Um, love, give me um the name uh, Yaku right here from this verse, all right? And he said, thy name shall be called no more Yaku, but Israel and also Israel. For as a prince has thou power with El and with men and have prevailed. And Yaakov asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou do ask after my name? And he blessed them there. And Yaakov called the place, uh, the, called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen El face to face and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore, the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day because he touched the hollow of Yaku's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at this in 32.11 right quick. All right. 32.11. Yeah, Yaku said, let's start with verse 9, because this is Yaku prayer. All right. It says, O El of my Abba, Abraham, and El of my Abba, Esau, Yah which has said unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy eBay. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. This word uh, fear here in verse 11, again, is Yari. All right, it means to uh, revere. It means to be uh, dreadful, reverence, uh, uh, frightened. All right, some of you all got to be mindful of what you're saying and what you're doing against people. What is the definition of Yaqub name, love? Jacob's name, heel holder, supplanter. And look up what a supplanter is when you get a chance, all right? Uh, and what is Israel name? Can you please? Where he changed it at um, verse... Uh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, all right. And Israel means Yah prevails, right? Our next stop on our journey is uh, Genesis chapter 35. And we're going from 1 through 29. Our point is in verse 17, all right? So it goes on to say, and El said unto Yaakov, Arise, go up to Beth El, and dwell there, make there an altar unto El, that appeared unto thee when thou fled from the face of Esau thy brother. And then Yaakov said unto his household, and to all that were with him, put away the strange El that are among you. Look, I've been only saying it, we've been only saying it for the longest. Time for Israel to put away the strange El. Some of you all are falling for the ghetto version of the Hebrew uh, 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 dialect and, and got all these extra wild heads and all these extra words and calling the creator name. Be careful because you're calling on something unknown now, something that you conjured up, something that you didn't study, something that somebody told you by mouth. You believe the literature over scripture. Right? Many of Israel do that. They, they so caught and bound in literature 
that they can't get with scripture, but they'll argue and debate with people based upon their knowledge of literature and people are coming from scripture. Young warriors don't even waste your time, all right? When you ascertaining, uh, 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 seeing it's a debate, and you starting to ask people what they talking about when, uh, 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 where's that at, and can't nobody give you no answers and all that, don't waste your time with none of that, them and their mess. Don't even get caught up in that. If you was to articulate the word shalom, shalom, S-H-A-L-O-N, it ain't no wild haze in there. You can check the book, Psalm 119, or you want, that's the Hebrew Olivet, all right? If you was going to uh, uh, sound it out and phonetically and uh, 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 do all the little, little rules of the language, the diphthong theory and the maxi lexionis, don't nobody even want to pay attention to the maxi lexionis. If you paid attention to the maxi lexionis, you wouldn't have none of the garbage like you got now. Talking about, uh, uh, I'm praying to who uh, Huba Uba, Huba Uba Uba, Shalom and Shalom and all of this and all of that. If you paid attention to the very thing that you claim in this uh, synagogue of Satan, you would have had an answer, but the very thing that is the synagogue of Satan, you fully embrace. I don't get that. I still, still, uh, 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 if you go back into any of our videos on the first month, the very first month, them videos alone uh, uh, show you that ain't should nobody be sitting around waiting for some barley. <laughs> the word of B means green ears. We only got a few more to, um, to go. Uh, Genesis 35, 1 through 29. All right. Verse 2 said, Then Yaku said unto his household, to all that were with him, put away the strange L that are among you, and be clean and change your garments. Let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto El, who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the day which I went. And they gave unto Yaku all the strange L which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Yaku hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of El was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Yaqub. Yaqub came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were within him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there El appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. But Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak, and the name of it was called Alam Bakuf. And El appeared unto Yaqub again when he came out of Hadaran Padar and blessed him. And El said unto him, Thy name is Yaqub. Thy name shall not be any more Yaqub, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And El said unto him, I am El Shaddai, be fruitful and multiply. Here we go again. This is our third charge, all right? In the book of Genesis, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. In the land which I gave Abraham, Esau to thee, I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And El went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Yaqub set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone. He poured a drink offering there on. He poured oil there on. Yaqub called the name of the place where El spake with him, Beth El. And they journeyed from Beth El, and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. And Raquel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his Abba called him Benami. And Raquel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Yaqub set up a pillar upon a grave that is the pillar of Raqub's grave unto this day. Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the tower of Edar, 
And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Yaqub was 12. The sons of Leah, uh, Reuben, Yaqub's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulon, the sons of Rachel, Yosef, and ben Ami, and the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, Dan and Naphtali, the sons of Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, Gad and Asher, these are the sons of Yaqub, which was born to him in Padaran. And Yaqub came unto Esau, his Abba, unto Mamre, unto the city of Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Esau journeyed. And the days of Esau were a hundred and four score years, and Esau grew up, gave up the Ruach and died and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days, and his sons Esau and Yaakov buried him. Hallelujah. Let's go back into 3517. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And this word fear here is also Yari which means uh, uh, to revere, cause to frighten, be afraid, terrible, terrible thing, dreadful, reverence, fearful, tearful, fe terrible acts, to be afraid, stand in awe. Very important that we understand this part as we apply scripture unto our lives, all right? Right here, uh, the midwife was telling Rachel, don't be afraid, you know, uh, you want to have this son. But Rachel was on her way out, dying. You know, she died. Uh, 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 it said here, uh, uh, Esau gave up the Ruach, all right? Check a look at that word in 29, that G-H-O-S-T word. We know that ain't a uh, showing up word that is used, so you can understand it more being the spirit. He gave up the, the spirit, and he died, all right? Um, let's go on to... Uh, our next stop, we almost finished, Genesis chapter 42. And we're going from 1 through 38. And our point is in verse 18. This is interesting. It says, now when Yaqub saw that there was corn in Mitzrayim, Yaqub said unto his sons, why do ye look one upon another? He said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Mitzrayim. Get you down there and buy for us from there that we may live and not die. And Yaqub's Yaf ten brethren went down to buy corn in Mitzrayim. But then I mean, Yaqub's brother, Yaqub sent not with his brethren, <laughs> For he said, let's peradventure mischief shall befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Yasef was the governor of the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Yasef's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Yasef saw his brethren, and he knew them but made himself strange unto them and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Yasef knew his brethren, but they knew not him. Yasef remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them and said unto them, Ye are spies to the seed of nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my master, but to buy food are thy ebeds come. We are all one man's sons. We are true men, thy ebeds are no spots. And he said unto them, Nay, but seek the nakedness of the land, ye are come. And they said, Thy ebeds are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our Abba, and one is not. And Yasef said unto them, That is it that I spake unto you, saying, Ye are spies. Hereby ye shall be proved by the life of Pharaoh. Ye shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come here. Send one of you and let him fetch your brother, and ye shall be kept in prison, that your words may be proved, whether there be any truth in you or else 
by the life of Pharaoh, surely ye are spies. And he put them all together into war three days. And Yosef said unto them the third day, this do in the for I fear Yah. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye carry corn for the famine of your houses, but bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. And they said one to another, we are truly guilty concerning our brother in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear Therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered them saying, Spake I not unto you saying, Do not sin against the child and ye would not hear. Therefore behold, also his blood is required. And they knew not that Yasef understood them for he spake unto them by an interpreter. And he turned himself about <laughs> from them and wept and returned to them again and communed with them and took from them Simeon and bound him before their eyes. Then Yasef commanded to fill the sacks with corn and to restore every man's money into his sack and to give him provision for the way and thus did he unto them. And they laid it their asses with corn and departed thence. And as one of them opened the sack to give his ass provender in the end, he espied his money for behold, it was in his sack's mouth. And he said unto his brother, and my money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them, and they were afraid, saying one to another, what is this that El have done unto us? Hold on, people. We got to remember that, you know, we got to deal with the decisions of our pimping. I got to deal with the decisions of my pimping, too, all right? Don't go blaming the most high when it's time to pay the piper. The divine laws of the universe suggest, as one soweth, so shall they reap. So it's very important that we understand that it's going to be some things that we're going to reap in our lives. Mine too. I mean, I, I, I spent the 80s, uh, uh, through the 80s and 90s selling narcotics, tearing up families, all right? And, and for the longest, I, I couldn't have a relationship for the longest. And then finally, my, my, my heavenly father sent me my Isha. You will have to reap uh, uh, as you have sown, okay? Be extremely mindful of that. Some of you all think it's all cool and games and all of that. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, his wife left him for me and all this and all that. Well, if she left him for you, that should tell you she got no loyalty. What you doing with her? I don't even, I don't even want to go any further, but look, people, just be mindful, all right? Be mindful as one soweth, so shall they reap, all right? This, right here, they hung about what has the mo most high done to them. No, what you have done, you know? Verse 29, they came unto Yaakov their Abba into the land of Canaan and told them all that befell them, saying, The man who is the master of the land spake roughly to us, took us for spies of the country. We said unto him, We are true men, we are no spies, we be twelve brethren, sons of our Abba, one is not, the younger is this day with our Abba in the land of Canaan. The man, the master of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me and take food for the family of your households and be gone. Bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you, your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. And it shall come to pass as they empty their sacks that behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their Abba saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Yaqub their Abba said unto them, Me have ye bereaved of my children. Yasef is not, Simeon is not, and ye will take ben Amin away. All these things are against me. And Reuben spake unto his Abba, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead. And he is left alone. 
If mischief before him, by the way, in the which ye go, then shall ye bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. All right? They right here in the midst of dealing with some things, the decision of their pimping. And again, this word uh, fear in verse 18 is that biblical Hebrew word yare. All right? Again, that word yare means um, to fear, to revere, to frighten, to be afraid, terrible, terrible thing, dreadful reference, fearful, terrible acts, to be afraid, stand in awe, fear. Very important that we as the people of the Most High understand how is it's used this day. And Yasef said unto them the third day, this do and live, for I fear Yah. All right? He was telling them that he literally reverenced the Most High. He dreads the Most High. He's frightened of the Most High. Some of you all are dealing with people that have no fear. And that's a dangerous position to be in, all right? Because they have no, no reverence for nothing. Probably not even for your life, all right? But you gung-ho running with them. Oh, these are my peeps. This is my fan. Uh, uh, uh. I'll let them stop today. Is that uh, Genesis chapter 43? We're going to read verses 1 through 34. And I'll stop. It's in verse 23. All right. It is written The famine was sore in the land. And it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Mitriam, their Abba said unto them, Go again, buy us a little food. Yehuda spake unto them, saying, The man did Solomon protest unto us, saying, Ye shall not see my face except your, your brother be with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. But if thou will not send them, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, Ye shall not see my face except your brother be with you. And Israel said, Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother? And they said, the man asked this straightly of our state and of our kindred, saying, is your Abba yet alive? Hey, ye another brother. And we told him according to the tenor of these words, could we certainly know that he would say, bring your brother down? Yehuda said unto Israel, his Abba, send the lad with me, and we will arise and go that we may live and not die, both we and thou and also our little ones. I will be surety for him of my hand, Shall thou require him? If I bring him not unto thee and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame forever. For except we had lingered, surely now we have returned this second time. And there Abba Israel said unto them, If it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm, a little honey, spices, myrrh, nuts, almonds, Take double money in your hand and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks. Carry it again in your hand per adventure. It was an oversight. Take also your brother and arise. Go again unto the man. And El Shaddai give you mercy before the man that he may send away your other brother and ben on me. If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. And the men took that present and they took double money in their hand. And Ben Amin rose up and went down to Mitzrayim and stood before Yasef. And when Yasef saw Ben Amin with them, he said to the ruler of his house, Bring these men home and slay and make ready, for these men shall dine with me at noon. And the man said, As and the man did as Yasef bade, and the man brought the men into Yasef's house. And the men were afraid because they were brought into Yasef's house. And they said, because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time are we brought in that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen and our asses. And they came near to the steward of Yasef's house and they communed with him at the door of the house and said, oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food. It came to pass when we came to the end that we opened our sacks, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight, and we have brought it again in our hand. Now, other money have we brought in our hands to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. And he said, Shalom be to you, fear not, 
Yael and the Ella Yaaba have given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And he brought Simeon out unto them. And the man brought the men into Yasef's house and gave them water. And they washed their feet and he gave their asses provender. And they made ready the present against Yasef came at noon for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Yasef came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to him to the earth. And he asked them of their welfare and said, Is your Abba well? The old man of whom ye spake, is he yet alive? And they answered, By uh, Ebed our Abba is in good health, he is yet alive. And they bowed their heads and made obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Ben Ami, his Amma's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom ye spake unto me? And he said, El be gracious unto thee, my son. And Yasef made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep, and he entered into his chamber and wept there. He washed his face, went out, and refrained himself, and said, Set on bread. And they set on for him by himself, and for them by themselves, and for the Mitzurians, which did eat with him by themselves, because the Mitzurians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Mitzurians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth, and the men marveled one to another. And he took and sent messes unto them from before him, but ben Amin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. Hallelujah. We were just reading in um, Genesis 43, verse 23. Very important. And again, this is this word Yari, which means Y-A-R-E, which means uh, to fear, revere, to frighten, to be afraid of, to be terrible. All right. And he said, um, 23 says, he says, Shalom be to you. Fear not, Yael and the El Yaaba have given you treasure in your sack. I had your money, and he brought Simeon out unto them. Very important that we understand how this word fear is using, being used, all right? If you don't have fear for the Most High, you don't have that reverential awe, that dread for the Most High, uh, that fright for the Most High, then you got nothing. Some of you all got it twisted in Israel, whereas you feared the adversary, but not the most high. You come to the most high in your kind of way, but you scared to go to the adversary. All right. Let's go over to uh, our, our next stop is Genesis chapter 46. We're going to read verses 1 through 34, and our point is in verse 3. All right. It is written, Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba or for sacrifices unto the El of his Abba Esau. And El spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Yaqub, Yaqub, and he said, here am I. And he said, I am El, the El of thy Abba, fear not to go down into Mitzrayim, for I will there make of thee a great nation. All right. Here you go. Got more of the mouth of the, uh, at the word in the hand, the mouth of the most high. All right. He's saying, for I will make thee of a great nation. I will go down with thee into Mitzrayim. I will surely bring thee up again, and Yasef shall put his hand upon thy eyes. And Yaakov rose up from Beersheba. The sons of Israel carried Yaakov, their Abba, and their little ones, their wives, in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry them. And they took their cattle, their goods, and they had gotten in the land of Canaan and came into Mitzrayim, Yaakov and all his seed with him. His sons, his sons' sons, his sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters and all his seed brought he with him into Mitzrayim. And these are the names of the children of Israel, Israel which came into Mitzrayim, Yaakov and his sons, Reuben, Yaakov's firstborn, and then the sons of Reuben, Hanak, uh, Falu, Herzon, and Carmi. And the sons of Simeon, Yamu, 
uh, Yemen, Ohad, Yakin, uh, Zohar, Shaul, the son of a Canaanitish woman, and the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari, the sons of Yehuda, Ur, Onan, Shela, Perez, Zara, Ber, and Onan died in the land of Canaan, and the sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamu. Amid, and the sons of Issachar, Tola, Fuba, and Yo, Shimron, and the sons of Zebulon, Sered, Elon, and Yahil. These be the sons of Leah, which she bear unto Yaqub and Padaran, which is his daughter Dinah, all the souls of his sons and the souls of his daughters were 30 and 3. And the sons of Gad, Ziphon, Haggai, Shuni, Esbon, Ari, Arodi, Arili, and the sons of Asher, Yemna, Ishua, uh, Isui, uh, Beriah, Sarah, their sister, and the sons of Bera, Heber, and Malkil. These are the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to Leah, his daughter, and these she bare unto Yaqub even sixteen souls. Huh. The sons of Rakil, uh, Yaqub's wife, Yasub, huh. and Ben Ami, and unto Yasub in the land of Mitzrayim were born Manesh, Ephraim, uh, huh. which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bare unto him. And the sons of Ben Ami were Bela, Baker, Ashbel, Gera, and Nahum, Eha, Rosh, Mupim, Hupim, and Ar. These are the sons of Rachel, which was born to Yaqub. All the sons were 14. And the sons of Dan, Hushim, the sons of Naphtali, Yazil, Gunai, Yezer, and Shalem. These are the sons of Bilhah, which Laban gave unto Rachel his daughter, and she bare these unto Yaqub. All the souls were seven. All the souls that came up with Yaqub into Mitrium, which came out of his loins besides Yaqub's sons' wives, all the sons were three score and six. And the sons of Yasef, which was born him in Mitrium, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Yaqub, which came into Mitrium, were three score and ten. He sent Yehuda before him unto Yasef to direct his face unto Goshen, and they came into the land of Goshen. And Yasef made ready his chariot, went up to meet Israel, his Abba, to Goshen, and presented himself unto him. And he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Israel said unto Yasef, Now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. And Yasef said unto his brethren and unto his Abba's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh and say unto him, My brethren and my Abba's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come to me. And the men are shepherds, for their trade have been to feed cattle, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they had. And it came to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? That ye shall say, Thy Ebed's trade have been about cattle from our youth even up until now, both we and also our Abbas, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Mitzurians. Hallelujah. I can really see how a shepherd would be an abomination unto the people of Egypt. Because that shepherd was sent to shepherd them out of the land of Egypt. To lead them out of Pharaoh and his shenanigans. This word uh, uh, fear. Again in Genesis 46 and 3. He said I am uh, He said, I am El, the El of the Abba. Fear not to go down to Mitrium. Don't be afraid. Don't be frightened. Don't be uh, 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 scared. Don't be terrible. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right. Don't be afraid. All right. This is the Mosiah talk. We got one more scripture. Our last scripture. We got two points in it. We're going to read Genesis chapter 50. And we're going to read verses 1 through 26. And we got to stop in verse 19 and a stop in verse 21. All right.
It is written. And Yasser fell upon his Abba's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And Yasser commanded his Ebeds, the physicians, to embalm his Abba, and the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were fulfilled for him, for so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Mysoreans mourned for him three score and ten days. And when the days of his mourning were past, Yasser spake unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, if now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My Abba made me swear, saying, Lo, I die in my grave, which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan. There shall thou bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my Abba, and I will come again. Pharaoh said, Go up, bury thy Abba, according as he had made thee swear. And Yasa went up to bury his Abba, and with him went up all the ebeds of Pharaoh, the elders of his house and the elders of the land of Mitriam, and all the house of Yasef and his brethren and his Abba's house, only their little ones and their flocks and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. There went up with him both chariots and horsemen and was a very great company, and they came to the threshing floor of Atat, which is beyond Jordan, and there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation, and he made a mourning for his Abba seven days. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of Atat, they said, this is a grievous mourning to the Mitzurians, wherefore the name of it was called Abba Mitzrium, which is beyond Jordan. And his sons did unto him according as he commanded, for his sons carried him into the land of Canaan, buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abram bought with the field for possession of a burying place of Ephron, the Hittite, before Mary. And Yasa returned into Mitzrayim, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his Abba after he had buried his Abba. And when Yasa's brethren saw their Abba was dead, they said, Yasa will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Yasef, saying, Thy Abba did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Yasef, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren in his sin. For they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespasses of thy events of the elder of thy Abba. And Yasef wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy Ebeds. Yasser said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the place of El. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but El made it, meant it unto good to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. And Yasef dwelt in Mitzrayim, he and his Abba's house. And Yasef lived 110 years. And Yasef saw Ephraim's children of the third generation and the children also of Matur, the son of Manesh, were brought up upon Yasef's knees. And Yasef said unto his brethren, I die and El will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, Isaac, and to Yaakov. And Yasef took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, El will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So Yasef died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Mitzrayim. Hallelujah. We got uh, in verse 19, we got the word fear, which is Yari again, and also in verse uh, 21, we got the word fear again, which is a, which is Yari. All right, so far today, we discuss four biblical Hebrew words for the English word fear, Mora, Yari, Yare, and Akat, um, Pakat, P-A-C-A-D. Very important that you understand how the fear is being used, okay? Because a lot of you all are 
fearing the uh, adversary and you're fearing men. You're fearing everything but the most high. And that's where the problem is going to be. Okay? We got a long series on fear. And I want each and every one to understand the fear of the most high is, is very important in your life. Because with the fear of the most high, you won't say and do a lot of the things many people say and do. All right? Um... Don't forget tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have a, a prayer, and you all are welcome. You should see the number right here in this uh, video in the comments below. I know on YouTube it's at the very beginning. Um, give us a call. Anybody uh, open for immersion, please, by all means, give us a call. All right? Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we kneel before your throne of mercy and grace, we glorify you, praise you, and thank you for life, health, and strength. We ask, Father, that you will unite our hearts to fear thy name. We ask this, this day, Father, that you will unite our hearts to fear thy name and allow we, your children, Father, to be ever mindful to reverence you in all that we say and do. I ask that you would continue to Open doors for us. We praise and thank you for opening the doors this week you open. Praise and thank you, Father, for making a way out of no way, Father, for that house to come to fruition, Father, for me and my Isha. We praise and thank you for it, Father. And I ask, Father, that you would bless that place to be a blessing not only to unto us, but unto whomever else of your children, Father, that may come along, that may need help from time to time. I ask right now, Father, that you would continue to seal this word into each and every one that joined us. Bless God and keep them according to your election and purpose. I ask that you would move mercifully and mightily upon us all and allow us all to align ourselves in your word because we fear you. We don't fear men. Allow us to fear you and align ourselves in your word. We ask this in Yeshua name we pray. Hallelujah. We appreciate you all taking time out to join us today. Remember, 11 p.m. tonight, Eastern Standard Time, all the way up into the sixth day. We got prayer at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You all be blessed. You all be safe. And continue to allow the Most High to lead and guide you into all truths. Shabbat Shalom.